Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another Chubbs Reviews. And if I look a little chubby, it's chubby-er than usual. It's because uh, my birthday just happened. That's why I didn't upload last Friday. And Monday's upload was pre-recorded. Because um, Sunday was my birthday. I turned 21. And yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm just fucking trying to do YouTube and I'm 21. So pray for me. But you know, this is just a hobby. This is just for fun and giving my opinions. And today we're reviewing Doom Patrol Season 2. Uh, on HBO Max, or I don't even think the DC Universe app exists anymore, but that's where the show originated. I did Doom Patrol Season 1, and that review will probably be better than this one, because it was like right after I watched the season, compared to I'm like kind of late on reviewing this after I finished Season 2. And also, Season 2 is not as good as Season 1, like most shows. But I kind of blame Coronavirus, because the show was um, kind of rushed at the end. It only has 9 episodes in the season, compared to the 15 which is funny because I think 9 is too little for this show. And 15 had like 2 episodes too long. Or, you know, it could have been 12 or 13 episodes. It would be the perfect amount. Uh, season 1 was too long. Season 2 is way too short. And um, anyway, I still recommend this show. Definitely go watch Doom Patrol Season 1 review. But if you would like to know if it's like worth really getting into. Because it's the second season as well. Um, or if you actually watch Doom Patrol Season 1 and... You know, you're about to watch season two or whatever. I do recommend it. It's as goofy as, interesting as, funny DC show about these five characters. Um, not these five characters, these few characters. And basically, this season is about the, uh, we have our group of Doom Patrol. We got Robot Man, Elastic Girl, you know, um, Cyborg's got a girlfriend in this season. Uh, and Niles is, I almost forgot, Negative Man and Crazy Jane. Um, and basically this season, everyone's got still got going their own struggles going on. Um, but it, it still is going forward. Niles is back. The big thing is Niles is back with his daughter, Dorothy, which reminds me of the... It, she basically looks like uh, the original Jumanji when the guy turns into an ape. But it's a little ape girl. And, like, her fucking power is that she can... She has, like, imaginary friends. And she can bring her imaginary friends to life. And one of them can, like, destroy the world. <laughs> So it's like, and, and like Niles or the Chief has always kept her captive. And they basically rescued her at the end of the first season, spoilers. Um, for that, I probably should have said spoilers first. But, you know, she's really not mentioned at all in the first season until like the very last episode. So it's kind of just a random character thrown out there. And then they actually made her a big focus in the second season. And if you like adorable characters that are fucking menacing and have weird shit going on in their head then, like, this is a perfect character, because <laughs> uh, she's just brand new, and she's very interesting, so she has these, like, giant spider that, a friend that's imaginary, and I don't know, this season was way more funny, a little bit more funny than the first season, but a little bit more too edgy and goofy, like, at one point, they fucking all shrink, or no, the beginning of the season starts with them all shrunk, um, because that's how, like, the last of the end season, the last season ended, um, and at one point, they go in this rat tunnel, and just to give you an idea of this show, and, like, you see these rats have babies, and they're all like, aww. And then one of the rats' babies is blind, and you see that rat fucking mom you fucking eat it. Like, eat the blind rat, because that's what rats do. And it was just gross and out of nowhere, and it, like, traumatized the little Dorothy girl. And it was just wild. Uh, you know, we got Cyborg still got this, like, romance on and off thing going on with this girl. That was kind of interesting and memorable. Basically, Cyborg learned about heartbreak. Um, Robot Man... Uh, actually visits his daughter quite a few times in this season, and that is actually very interesting. So you got a lot to look forward to about Robot Man in this season. Um, he's just as funny. Brendan Fraser as Robot Man is as hilarious as ever. Um, and yeah, this like I said, this season was it didn't actually have a main villain. Mister Nobody was the main villain. The season one does not make a re a, a return in season two. We got like Doctor Time. No, Mister Time. Actually, I forgot his fucking name already. I think it's Dr. Time with a Y. He spells time with a Y. In, like, episode three or four as a villain, kind of. And he was pretty interesting. He was, like, a disco dancing guy with a head for... A clock for a head. But really, the, the one cool one was, like, a um, guy... I forgot his name, but he was basically pain. And, like, he would inflict pain. And that he, like, fed off of it. That was a very dark and insanely cool episode. There wasn't as many cool characters, like, in the first season, like, the Beard Hunter... Uh, which kind of, I'm not going to spoil it. He kind of makes a reappearance, but it, it's interesting. Um, and like the, the flame sword guy, <laughs> just like in Game of Thrones, there's also a flame sword guy in this. Uh, he kind of returns from the first season, but not that long. Um, but it does have a build up and a very fucking unsatisfying cliffhanger ending of season two. 
I will say that it was just I think that's what the dirty taste is in my mouth is the fucking cliffhanger ending um because otherwise season two is just as good and as goofy as season one it does have one very kind of preachy episode i found it kind of preachy on like transgender equality and rights i don't mind fucking like having that shit in the show but like there's literally a character that is just that is their character they just preach to you about transgender equality and rights that is their character because danny the brick actually shows up and instead of danny the street now it's danny the brick and every time danny the brick fucking shows up he always brings this, like, it's just dumb. And that episode I did not like. That was the one episode I just, zero out of ten. Um, but everything else, like, Crazy Jane has also got her own, oh, she's got a pretty interesting storyline in this season of, like, trying, of Jane herself trying to prove her worth inside of her head because at the end of the first season, uh, this new personality, Miranda, came back, which was always very powerful because she was very good at being the main person on the top until she disappeared for some reason. And Jane took over, and, like, basically we learned Miranda's origins and, like, all this weird shit going on in the underground, which is inside Jane's head. And Jane has to prove her worth and all that. And, like I said, it, it would be pretty satisfying if it had a satisfying conclusion, but it kind of just left on a cliffhanger. And I understand why coronavirus. Um, but, yeah, there is a cliffhanger there that is just going to, like, leave you, like, wow, that sucks. But season one, season one is, like, awesome. And this is, this felt like half a season, like, part one of season two right here and like we're getting part two of season two later basically that's what's happening so for this season to me it's like a six or seven out of ten um probably yeah probably six or seven out of ten just and that's with a lot of disappointment and you know just off the cliffhanger other than that it's pretty much good old doom patrol if you watch my season one review and like what you hear there you're gonna like season two i just just you know coronavirus anyways thank you guys so much for watching like, comment, subscribe, and peace out.